That is another thing that I've experienced working in libraries as well. And I think that just reminds me that for me, that was another thing. Not only like did you just have the customer service humor, but you had so much internal work anxiety Mm. being made humor. (laughs) And I was just like, me, hashtag fucking me. I can laugh at myself and my torment because right now I'm watching a cute anime that's in pastels with a skeleton and it's not me sitting in real life. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I could definitely have moments where I was like, I relate to this so much. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Box, the Annie chat box, where five friends snuggle up in a teeny tiny space to talk about all things anime. My name is Cami, and fresh off of work and shoving pasta in my mouth, I am here as your host tonight with a full house. And starting all the way across a lot of oceans, I am here with Jonathan Joestar. Hello. And there is a party going on at a house in Portland, Oregon that is occupied by Gregory. What's up, Internet? How's it going? And two mega partiers, one included the wonderful Dominic. Hey, I've consumed alcohol. (laughs) It's a party. You know who else has consumed alcohol? The wonderful producer extraordinaire, Cassie. Uh I was going to mirror you and just be like, I'm fresh off the heels of doing a test that I've been stressed out about all fucking day. (laughs) And so I'm winding on down with, you know, the liquor of the house. She's been stressed out about this test like the entire day and is like, oh, I hope I don't fail. Then me and Craig go out so she can take this test and starts it at like 3.30. Literally 30 minutes later, she texts us, oh, I passed with... Which yep. <laughs> thirty minute test means that was n- probably not that bad. Nope. Yeah, probably did fine. Two hours. It's fine. This is so, okay. I passed. And the entire time I'm like, You're gonna do great. You're gonna do fine. You're gonna pass it. I believe in you. Which look, is the look. mood we have for this podcast. We're all gonna do great today. Not me. Yeah. I never do great. <laughs> Same. Ah, I said actually very similar things, and the flying colors are wonderful, and you deserve to celebrate, so big congrats. We love you so much. Celebrate good times, come on! Oh yes, and good times we will celebrate, because we get to do a lifeboat special review for you all today. If you do not know what a lifeboat is, and actually, if you're new to our impressions, let me see how quickly I can describe this, but we have a nautical ocean theme with our impressions going on, um, where basically our anime sinks or swims into the water, and sometimes when a show sinks or fails, there's too many that have uh, like failed or sunk, then we will try to find a show that wasn't on our impressions list that we think, hey, there's something valuable here and we want to review it. That's our lifeboats. So well, we are floating going... out there in the ocean. It looks shiny. <laughs> We're going to pull it in. <laughs> oh, and this one's so shiny. I'm excited. <laughs> so, um, so yes, uh, for the fall, yes. So this is going to be our lifeboat that we pulled in for the fall 2018 season. And it is called Gaikotsu Shotenin Honda-san, or the Skull-Faced Bookseller Honda-san. Um, just to do a little bit of backtracking, I recall watching the first couple episodes of this show that season. I hadn't really heard anything about it, but I think I saw a screen cap talking about yaoi books or something in this show. And I was like, okay, I have to watch this. And I really, really liked it. And then I was like, Craig! Are you also watching this show? And mm. Craig was like, "Hell yeah!" Yep. And yeah, Craig also really enjoyed it at its time of airing. I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we wanted to go ahead, and I campaigned to do it as a lifeboat. So here we are now. Um, and during our lifeboat reviews, we won't have a main topic just because we want to be able to dive in a little bit on why this show was noticeable, what made it special, and why again uh, I campaigned so hard to have it. So, um, 
Yeah, I think I just described why I at least reeled it in for us. Um, but let me hit you with some production notes. So Skullface bookseller Honda-san is animated by Studio DLE. Other shows by them include Dog and Scissors, which I refuse to watch because animal abuse, 18F. Oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Did what? You say, did you say dog and scissors? Dog yeah. and scissors. What? I'm going to yeah. exist. I'm going to yeah, need you to rewind it's... and pause and explain for a minute. Yeah, I got you. I'm, I'm I got you. morbidly curious. I got you. I got you. I'm going to drop this in our chat, but I will also read out the synopsis for dog and scissors, which I heard about and I was like, no. Um, okay, so dog and scissors which is not the show we were life <laughs> life voting tonight, <laughs> <laughs> is a nonsense comical mystery. Harumi Kazuhito is a high school boy who loves books and is a fan of the novelist Natsuno Kirehime. One day, he finds Kirehime writing at a cafe, about to be shot by a robber. He protects her from the attack, but is killed instead. Through the supernatural power of a bookworm, he is reincarnated as a dachshund, which is a wiener dog. Mm -hmm. Kazuhito, as a dog, writhes in a painful, bookless life when a sadistic woman carrying a pair of scissors offers him help. She is the author. So, from what I have seen, Isekai? it's literally... Well, I mean, he he's a dog, but he's not in a different world. He just re reincarnated as a dog. No. And the author is like a sadist that basically like scares him the entire time mm -hmm. and like runs around with scissors chasing him. And I was like, no, I'm not here for this fam. It is a 6.66 <sighs> 6, uh, according to the My Anime List Wait, it has scale. a 6.66 6, 6, if that doesn't scare <laughs> you away. <laughs> Summer it's of the Anime sign 2013. of the devil, Craig. It is produced by yeah. Gonzo. So yes, steer clear of this one, kids. I apologize yeah. we went off on that romp. I just needed to understand. Yeah, anyway, I, continue, I'd Cammy. Never, I'd never no, heard of that until now. I, I'm just... I heard, yeah, I heard it's, scissors it's, and dog, and I was like, uh, this sounds incredibly bad. Like I said, yep, no watching it because animal abuse. Fuck that show. Um, but the thing is, DLM hasn't done a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, other things that they have done that I also marked down were 18 If, which Craig, I think you... Nah, that was John, actually. John. Yeah. Okay. Way so back John in the day. It did an impression on that. Mm -hmm. um, and also Sword Guy, the animation. So I don't know a ton of other stuff by uh, <laughs> DLE, but you know what? <laughs> they did this show. They did. So. Now, to give a, a synopsis of this show that we will be reviewing today, which does not have animal abuse, nor is called Dog and Scissors, is as follows. Honda is a skeleton, but more importantly, he is a bookseller. And he'll tell you from firsthand experience that the job of a bookstore employee is more challenging than it may seem to the average customer. Alongside his equally eccentric co-workers, Honda constantly deals with stressful requirements of the bookselling industry. From the drama of receiving new titles without their bonus material, to the struggle of providing quality service to customers who speak a different language, the work of a skeleton bookseller never ends. Nevertheless, despite the hardships he faces... Honda thoroughly enjoys his job and strives to bring the best book selections and service to his customers. Um, the other piece of information that I want to throw out there is this is a short form anime series. Each mm -hmm. episode is about 10 minutes long with uh, opening and ending in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then that being said, uh, we can dive on into story saying first off that it's a comedy and I have a question for everybody and that's did the comedy work for you or not? Anyone can chime in. Can I start? Because it's so yeah. complicated. Go. Mm -hmm. Do it. It's a com the, this is, is, like, is it a complicated relationship? It is a complicated relationship. So that's the first thing that I would point out is that Honda-san is one of the first animes that I have watched that is a comedy. That I watched the first couple episodes and was maybe much to some people's dismay like, eh. This is all right. Mm -hmm. This isn't my cup of tea, but this is all right. And then as I watched it and, and kind of got attached to Honda and realized how relatable he was and also started observing the people around him and also just some of the interactions he had in the second half, I really started liking it a lot more. Um, mm. Dominic was actually a bit behind me when we were watching this show because uh, we normally watch shows together. 
But this one, I was like, hey, it's a short and we're behind schedule. You want to just do our own thing. And I got further than them and was like, hey, honey, remember how I was saying I wasn't really feeling it in the first couple episodes? This is where it gets good. I like the second half. Um, so I'd say that, like, it's it's interesting because the comedy in the first half and the comedy in the second half are not different. Um, the, yeah. The way that I described it to Cammy, Cammy, oh, my God, Cammy, I am so sorry. Cammy <laughs> is that I feel like this is um soft humor. Like it's not something that's it's not relying on making you roll on the ground laughing. It's not anything that's slapsticky per se. Mm-hmm. Um but it's like a soft humor. It's hey, you find this relatable? Isn't that funny? Gut jab. Hey, hey. Um it also just based on the voice acting. A lot of the uh I think comedy relies a lot on Honda's voice actor. Mm-hmm. And he does a fantastic job throughout the whole show. It just wasn't resonating with me at first. But okay. as the show went on, I felt more connected to him. And also his performances just seemed to get better and better and better. That's how mm. I felt kind of about the comedy in the show. It's something that had to grow on me. Yeah. Okay. Um. And then I, I also think actually what you're saying makes a lot of sense when you're saying that you needed to get to like know Honda and get adjusted to the show because like – the fact is it's one of those situations where they plop you right down into the environment without giving you a second to, like, you know, um, really understand, like, where everything is placed in the story. Again, it's kind of like you just buckle up, you're in for this ride. So hmm. once it's, like, you get some time to fully, like, adjust yourself and realize everything that's happening, yeah, it could be a little more endearing. I think that actually makes a lot of sense. For sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyone, el- anyone else? Craig, John, or Dominic? Um, on the comedy. So basically, I watched this show as is airing, much like you. I watched it um, week after week, and um, this is interesting in the fact that, like, the more I watched of it, I, as Kess said, I agree to the fact that it's really about the ensemble cast and Honda's performance really sells it. But also, what kind of stuck uh, stuck out to me was the fact that, like, not only do you get to see like the eccentric daily lives of these characters but like also kind of like what's it like to work in a bookstore what's it like to actually get and receive stock items and put them out on shelves and have to reorder stuff like that the life cycle of books because this is all meta dealing with the fact that the author his name pseudonym is honda and it's Mm -hmm. a self-insert manga about his time at working at a bookstore so hey there you go yeah, yeah, very, me- very, very meta. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think actually one of my my favorite things with the comedy was just like how referential it was to um, like anime and manga titles and like otaku culture, just because that's something that I could relate to. So I yeah. enjoyed the comedy because it reached um, like a book humor, which I appreciate just as someone as a librarian, which is very different than being in a retail situation, but like. I kind of found relation to that, the um, otaku stuff, the working in a customer service atmosphere, like all of it was just something that I really related to and enjoy seeing in my comedy, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think mm. that's what made it effective for me. I think. Uh, what? Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think another thing that made it um, a little bit easier for me to adjust is that. And I'll talk about this more in production, but just the character designs are something that we are so not used to. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And I think that that plays, one, into the comedy of the show, which is why I'm bringing it up now. Because a lot of the ways that they um, intricately animate how the characters act or sometimes how Honda saw a skeleton is sweating um, (laughs) are really interesting and entertaining. But again, took me a little while to get used to it because all of it is so very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to highlight that because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, works for me. Um, you know what? I think especially after our uh, Miss Vampire uh, review, I am really curious, Dominic, if you had any thoughts on the comedy, if it worked for you, if it didn't, uh, stuff like that. Um, yes and no. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of a I'm kind of a hard sell when it comes to uh shorts especially because mm. i feel like there's less time to really get like and committed to what's happening 
Um, I think the only times where this has not happened is like stuff like Pop Team Epic, where it is so completely like out there, or there's like a there's something like special to it, I guess, to me particularly that makes mm-hmm. it stand out. Um, with with Honda San, it's like. There were some jokes that I found like funny or enjoyable, um, but generally, like, I wasn't super invested in <laughs> what was going on. And I especially remember, like, before we had to watch this for the review, before it became a lifeboat, me and Cassie, like, watched the first episode. And I. We were just kind of like, oh, this is, you know, a special yaoi book. Ah, this is funny. (laughs) And then uh, we, I don't think we watched any more after that um, until we had to review it. So it's, it's, it was a cute show that I was like, you know, just like, oh yeah, this is, this is enjoyable while I was watching it. But I think if I didn't have to watch it for the actual review, I probably wouldn't have gotten around to it. Um. Yeah. That's fair. So, yeah, me, me, it's just, uh, me, and shorts generally just don't go very well because I like need that yeah. time investment. But that's just me. To to be fair, in the I think it was the last episode when they did the Christmas slash um, New Year special was the hardest I heard them laugh at the show, and that was at the no. very end. So good for yeah. You there was you one. There was it. one joke at the end that made me chuckle quite a bit. Wasn't that also the same episode where? They had him doing the closing shift. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah the night Correct. shift. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that makes sense. Like, I can totally see it just being like, eh, this is this is here, and I'll watch it, but like, I don't really need to continue it. Yeah. I think that honestly is a very understandable reaction. Um, John, what did you think about the comedy? How was it for you? Um, the the referential humor definitely uh got the most laughs at me. Um, but I did still enjoy the characters and Honda San and his reactions to things. I really enjoyed the the referential humor. Um, in particular, uh, like the the bit that uh, the first bit that actually made me laugh was the um twenty four reference in episode two when I caught that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but also the the. Honda himself and his reactions and his delivery with his voice acting, that really helped set it for me as well. Uh, there just wasn't many moments that made me laugh out loud, but I still like, I still enjoyed it and still found it very really humorous regardless. So, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, it's honestly been a long time since... I watched it. So I can't actually recall if it made me laugh out loud either. If it did, it was probably because I watched it together with Get and then it became like the little comedy show that we got to watch every week. <laughs> and it just very much appealed to our sense of humor. So I think it, it in a way, if anything, it was just carried by having that experience of watching it together. Yeah. Um, also, but also I... Oh, yeah, right. go ahead. Uh, I, I also related to the whole... Um having customers with a language barrier thing because yeah. um I I work at a German company uh in the oh. UK uh that is very prolific across all of Europe and uh I also live in a port town with cruise ships coming in quite often oh, so okay anytime a cruise ship comes in uh I get a rush of customers who have probably spotty English at best. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah. And there, there, there's, uh, I, I specifically remember a uh, a time I had a customer who wanted um, this like dried mashed potato we used to sell that you just like add water to, um, and. Him trying to describe that to me without any English. Black magic potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh They're my black goodness. magic. I can't even imagine. 
<laughs> I am a mage. Are you yeah. a mage? You're a mage? Yes. With how she makes mashed use- potatoes? Yes. That's I, true. That's I have truth. powder. I pour in my magic white water. And then it's mashed potatoes. Or- what the fuck <laughs> is that? <laughs> you don't... It- you're about. I like to you're say ba- clear water, and then I said white water. I don't under- white, even know yeah, what white, white water. water. Is. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very disturbing. That sounds know, very disturbing. Right? I was like, sounds like I milk? poured like color in there. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna pour milk in next time. <laughs> don't do that. That <laughs> sounds like it'd be really gross. <laughs> Wait, in a mashed potato, like, would it really be that bad? Though? I think if it's too much, if it's just if she just be poured, very if milky. she just poured milk, I don't... it would be. No, 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 no. She's Sloppy. to make the mashed potatoes regularly, but then she puts oh. the fork down, like when you're going to pour gravy in, but then she just pours the milk instead of the gravy. <laughs> so it's like no. seeping through it a little rift. I don't know rift. how we ended up here. I'm so like- confused. John brought like up black this. magic potatoes because I guess one of his customers <laughs> likes black magic potatoes. I, I, I had mean, a customer with a language barrier asking for um, the uh, <laughs> instant mash uh, yeah. and just trying to... Just trying to figure it out with his hand gestures and whatever um, gestures he was doing. Um, that was like, and the only English word he could say was potato. Um, yeah, and you know what? To honestly back uh, backpack off of that, uh, that is another thing that I've experienced working in libraries as well. And I think that just reminds me that for me that was another thing not only like did you just have the customer service humor but you had so much internal work anxiety Mm. being made humor (laughs) and i was just like me hashtag fucking me i can laugh at myself and my torment because right now i'm watching a cute anime that's in pastels with a skeleton and it's not me sitting in real life (laughs) yeah i could definitely have moments where i was like i relate to this so much yeah, but I do think that I mean, just with with almost any comedy, it's really mm. like whatever your speed is. And I actually did want to ask um, Cassie for you to talk about this too, because you said that you preferred to watch the show spread out as opposed to binging it, right? Correct. And I was actually kind of mad at myself because I waited until yesterday to watch a good deal of it and then finished it today. Because I feel like when I was just watching um, it at the beginning and then like when I watched it a little a couple episodes here and there throughout the week, I was really kind of like, oh, that was pleasant. And then when I had to sit there and watch the rest of it, I was like, this is pleasant, but I kind of want it to be over mm-hmm. um, because I want to watch something else. But mm. not because the show was bad or anything like that, but I think that the show is more fun is kind of like... I think that we described this with uh, Dragon Maid and a couple of other shows where it was it was like kind of like a healing thing at the end of your day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. uh, Honda-san falls into that same category. And to be fair, I probably, if I even wanted to rewatch Uzum, or not Uzum Maid, what the hell? <laughs> Dragon Maid. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> you know you want to rewatch oh, Uzum Maid. no. I like to say Dragon Maid. What is happening to me? Cass, um, you have a, Cass, you have a Dogokova show this season. I do, and it's actually surprisingly entertaining. Anyway, um, if I wanted to rewatch um, Dragon Maid, I probably, again, would probably watch it in a couple episode spurts. And that show is okay. one of my favorites um, mm-hmm. when it comes to like healing and um, comedy anime because it's just so nice in small doses. And I think that Honda falls in that same category. Um, and I think yeah. I would have enjoyed Honda a little bit more, even if I watched it while it was airing, where I'd get like one episode um every week i think that if i had done that and i'm kicking myself for not doing it i probably would have enjoyed it more than i did yeah that makes mm-hmm. sense i think yeah. that makes a lot of sense. i also watched it while it was airing so yep. there once, you go you watched week. it in its peak in its in, in its best <laughs> mm. form i i also watched it almost entirely in one go and um i still enjoyed it but yeah i, I would recommend just one here and there every now and again. For sure, yeah. Um, and I, I think that's kind of like a trap that we all fall into with shorts. Like even when, um, I can't remember why I'm, Lu- Luluco? Like when I was re-watching yeah. Luluco, actually mm. both times I watched Luluco, I binged it. Um, and I think it's definitely worth considering that like these may be short for a reason. Um, yeah. And yeah, just to kind of consume them as such. So it's actually... 
interesting to think about that for shorts in the future. Mental Can- note there. Consume them as a snack, not an entree. A snicky snack? A snicky snack. snack. I there think that's the only short I've ever been able to watch all the way through was um I can't understand what my husband is saying. But again, that one has more of a narrative. More yeah. so than being a comedy. I mean it is a comedy, yeah. but you, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. For, com- for well, me, like the, yeah. Yeah. For me, Luluko's the one that I just binged in and I was like, okay, I'm good with this. But that one That's also kind of has like a, a narrative. Yeah, it yeah, does. I think that one has a overarching. It it gets anyway. I'm not gonna jump on this for too long, but yeah, that's all I, good. I mm-hmm. agree. Yeah. Um. Honestly, that aside and out of the way, um, do you guys want to jump into characters? Sure. Yeah, because that's sure. what makes this uh the show fun. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, and I'll just start off very simply saying that I love Skeleton I love Skeleton Boy. I love Honda San. <laughs> he is so good. To, I don't I don't know. I think it's like a combination of how charismatic he is due to his voice acting despite his design and the times that they do like give him so many expressions. Um you know, when I first saw him I was like, "Oh, he's going to talk with like a monster voice and he's going to be this sort of character, but he's just a soft boy with a very hard skelly exterior." <laughs> hard skelly <laughs> you know? exterior. And the and the ED builds on to that and I got so Aww. frustrated with Dominic when they were watching cuz they kept skipping the ED <laughs> I skipped, and I was like, oh, I was like marathoning. I want to watch I was marathoning the through ED. it and I was like skipping the OP and the ED and Cassie was like, "Can we watch the ED?" And I was like, no, I don't have time for this. I gotta watch this entire show. I'm just skipping it but every we time. we did watch the ED on episode 12, and they were like, aww. And I'm like, see? Mm. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's so cute. And I actually do like that we get um, some development, more so in the second half, not only of his experiences as a um, as a worker in a bookstore, but also his like experience as a writer and, and yeah. doing manga. That was pretty cool to get some uh, insight there, and then even see how he um, how he like approaches his manga and like keeping with anonymity of like the customers and stuff. Just how he frames it. That was a nice little peek into his character. Um, but yeah, I think I related a lot to his massive anxiety, and I appreciated um, his perspective. I think that if I hadn't liked the main character as much, I probably wouldn't love the show as much as I do. Mm. But. He's good. I voted for Honda as my best boy of 2018. So keep, be that as it may. <laughs> Just keep that as keep that as you will. Yeah. Yes, I love his character. I see a lot of very strange faces <laughs> in this in this voice chat. Um, but I want to bring attention to a certain beautiful older gentlemanly <laughs> face. <laughs> I have so many questions. If you look at the chat, if you look at the call, you got it. I know. I just want to know why it's it's Craig's favorite character. I want to know. Yes. I want to know. I want to oh, learn. Man. Concern. Uh, God. Gotcha. I want to learn. Gotcha. Teach Craig, me. Craig just Teach wants me your ways. Uh, j- some Japanese erotic manga. Yeah, just Japanese erotic manga. Um, no, honestly, I, can I figured help you with that, <laughs> honey. <It's- laughs> honey. No, this is no. not the time and place for that. I can help you find it. Honey. I can help you buy it. I can help you do lots of things. Honey, calm yourself. I'm very, I'm very scared, Let Mom. Let Craig talk about his old man. He, he has <laughs> swagger. He is distinguished. He ha- He speaks in you very broken English. don't even know his name. It, was it ever revealed? No. Unfortunate. I mean, to be uh, fair, Craig makes a very good point. Episode like, one, the old man. That's Craig's favorite the customers character. Customers in the show actually yes. brought some of the gre- the best comedy. So Craig mm. is, I agree, appealing to that, and I think yes. that's great. You don't even have to necessarily talk about this character, Craig, but if you talk about him, you can also talk to, about other ones because some of the customers were great. Uh, yeah, I well, every time they said manga, uh, it manga. kind of made me raise an eyebrow. Mmm, later. Mm, later. Um, <laughs> uh, I just like as Cass said I like the fact that they're just in there and they're just trying to get books for their families and whatnot. all those to some varying degrees of uh, 
knowledge in the medium of comic books. Uh, they provided the best jokes, as Cass said. Um, and it produced probably the best reactions out of Honda. Anxiety. He's such a precious boy, Honda. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I... <laughs> I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I thought there were too many foreigner jokes. I can also see that. I can also see it being kind of like pushed in a direction where it's like, oh, ho, ho, look, it's a guy. It's an old, older English dude. It's the guy from Brazil. It's the gay dudes. And you're just like, OK, we're, we're done. Yeah, I was I was quite fond of the travelers from Texas. But you know what? I can kind of agree. I like I like I, think I like one... that one because that one was just really like wholesome even though it was like, yes. uh-huh, you know, like, oh, they could just buy Naruto at home. I still like that because at least there was like this wholesome <laughs> spin to it. But I, For sure. I still thought um, there were like too many like, oh, whole, you know, foreigners with bad English jokes. That was yeah. just me, I get though. that. For sure. But I think that those jokes were good. But I agree that we could have had more um, diversity in the customers. I remember one of the episodes that i liked the most was when the little old woman came in after honda had a really bad phone call oh Oh, yeah yeah. i love that and just asked where a book was and she was just so happy to be there and then she just thanked and you know what stuff like that was really great i would have liked more of that i can at least agree but i do think some of the foreigner jokes were fun so i think that more of a balance would have been nice like some more like locals coming into the bookstore and having some wacky shenanigans would have been appreciated yeah 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 and then i almost just wonder about um him sitting at the table with his editor because the fact of the matter is, all of the experiences that are recalled in this series are from his time at the bookstore. But I also wonder if there was ever, like, a time where the editor's like, no, to sell this, you need to have all the fucking foreigner jokes because Japan does like to make fun of foreigners. Yeah. Like, it's it's mm. interesting. I'd love, some, I'd love some inside baseball about that. Yeah, I agree. Also, I think yeah. I said the foreigners speak English. I meant in speaking bad Japanese. I'm... Very inebriated. <laughs> it's hard. Very, to speak okay. words. I, I feel like we. I feel like we got what you yeah. meant. I just yeah, wanted to good. clarify in case someone called me out on that. No, you nah, good. You I good. think we all knew what you meant. Yeah. Um. Speaking of though, because you said your icon is inspired by a specific joke, can you tell me? Yeah. What you have? Yeah. Are you a paper bag. Oh boy? yeah, my, my, I was <laughs> facing my on character it. is the paper bag boy. I don't even. I don't even know what they actually call him. But uh, let me check. I yeah. got you. <laughs> because like in the last episode, he's him and Honda San are just like, oh, no, we don't want to put on the Santa hats. And then they're like, when they finish the Christmas, you know, shift, it's like, oh, for ne- New Year's, we're going to put on, you know, these mochi hats. And then it just has him standing there with the mochi hat on looking so like <laughs> fucking defeated. distressed and defeated for like <laughs> um straight minute he's just standing there while the other people are talking in the the background background and i was just laughing uh the character the character's name is kami bukuro oh okay i wanted more about him because he seemed to be like have he seemed to have like a lot of interactions where he's like i gotta go i gotta leave and then um right and then he had a really funny interaction with one of the characters where he's like i need to hug you can you just give me a hug for strength and i'm like Oh, are are these two like friends? Like, what's going on here? And and all Dominic took out of that was oh, sexual harassment. Cool. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. oh like, god. I, don't know. I think that my major complaint about characters is that outside of Honda, um, we don't get to hang out a lot with his coworkers. I want to know really. more about them. They're so interesting. I will also I will also say that I like Kendo San because. Yeah, uh, what happened to him? He was he's so such happy. A soft boy, he's, he's such a he's, soft boy. He's, he was so soft. His name is Kendo because he has a Kendo mask. But Kendo <laughs> Kendo San yes, also does. works really well as like an actual name. They just it have does, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he lifts he lifts the boxes well. Oh my god! I just uh, speaking of other crazy appearances and names, John, did you know <laughs> that your favorite character is named Pest Mask? I, I, yeah, I, she's wearing a Plague Doctor mask, um, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they should have called her as Plague Doctor yeah. Mask. <laughs> Plague Doctor. Um, and, like, when she was 
when she first appeared, it threw me off because, like, sort of similar with Honda san himself, you, you've got this, like, really, uh, like, actually scary appearance, but actually such a pleasant voice to listen to. And just, like, that mismatch <laughs> threw me off. Um, but she has these, like, quick quips that come up every so often. And. Yep. Like, you know what? I feel like she displays a very like a person in a work environment that we've like a, that anybody encounters like mm. at one point. You know, that you can kind of like almost look up to in a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> like she's she definitely knows what she's doing. She's got the experience under her belt and is a way to has a way of calming people down and giving them guidance and also, but at the same time, getting them to do their shit <laughs> that it needs to like. Nice. Wearing the fucking Santa hat. <laughs> <laughs> or emoji. Oh, the mochi hat. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, Cassie, your icon looks so, like, pastel and flowery and soft, but also really, like, sad and in despair, and I'm just living for the the contrast here. <laughs> I just I just love this character so much. If anything pulled me into actually caring about Honda um, a little bit more, um, at on a little bit deeper level, it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I think her name was like Chief Section Armor. You are correct. Or Section Chief Armor. Sorry, I mixed up words. Um, but she's she's fun because I think that what's interesting is she's definitely one of the um, like superior leaders at the work, but she's also just such a mess, and yeah. she just cares very deeply about the literature that she consumes, but she also at times provides some, you know, guidance for those people that are, you know, under her. And I think that's great. And I wish I had more with her. Um, there's an episode specifically where they go to like, I think it's like a BL event and she gets very emotional and excited okay. with wholesaler <laughs> son. Um, and she also gets very sad when one of the books that she really likes is put on the like harmful list or something like that. Um, and, and she's just, she emotes so much, which is something that I found really endearing and fun um, because she's one of the few characters that's actually brought to tears by the stuff that's happening. Um, I remember there was one scene where she wanted to um, help a little girl check out her book. And she was so upset because they decided to go a different way, but it turns out they just went a different way to walk to her to check her out. Um, and she was so excited about it. And just that endearing nature of her made me literally like that character. If I had any oh, complaints, nice. it's that I didn't get to have more time with her. She was so fun. So, I mean, honestly, we could definitely cut down on the, the foreigner jokes, but then maybe make more time for, like, the backstage coworker interaction. Yes, yeah. yeah. please. More effective. Because, like, there were some times where I really wished I could have spent some more time with – um. Oh god, none of us have her as our character, but there was like a sarcastic fox mask girl. Uh, oh, yes. she, yeah, oh, yeah. Kids in a mask. And I just yes. I wanted to know what her deal was. She was so she would probably be my second favorite after um after armor. And I'm like, I want to know these people's lives. Why do they work at a bookstore? Why do they like it? What are some of their off you know stage impressions of what's going on in their lives? I wanted to know more, more. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a definite. I think that's definitely a fair argument, especially mm. just because there are so many other coworkers as well. For sure. Um, and then like you even run into the last episode, you get to meet the night shift crew, and they're all fun. Yeah, like, but yeah. they're only there cool for like them. three minutes. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. And you get little I mean, skits least... with like full face with how neat and organized he is because that's just what he do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like Konda has all of these colorful and interesting characters, but we don't get to spend a whole lot of time with them, which kind of begs the question of whether this works better as a short or if we would have liked them to be a little bit longer. But then I think the manga also doesn't go too much into that information either. No. So yeah, I think it, it works as a short, but I think that if they, they like developed the other characters and had some side skits that were just based on them outside of Honda, it could have been a longer show. Yeah. I was going to say, I think the manga is only like, two volumes like in its entirety and it's like done yep it is Mm -hmm. if from what i looked up earlier i think it's four and it i'm looking now it's not a four comma it's actually oh shit 
It's available to buy in the U.S. via Yen Press, by the way, if anyone wants to check it out. Neat beat. Um, yeah, that's good to know. Actually, diving into that, I feel like it's kind of a reasonable segue, but we can go into production from there. Um, sure. Because, because, like Cassie said, this art style, like, and the character designs on initial Ooh. reaction is so different. It is. <laughs> it is nothing like the moe we see today. Ah, yes. I think, honestly, it was, like, yes, Honda as a skeleton, but I think I was more surprised when I realized that not the customers, but all of his co-workers also just have these very ridiculous appearances. <laughs> and yeah. then finding out they were named after those appearances, while Honda's not called Skeleton-san, was also interesting. <laughs> yeah, you've got, like, Armor, who I liked, and she has, like, you know, a suit of Armor head, and then you've got the paper box, or the paper bag. Um, I don't know what the rabbit guy's name was, but he creeped rabbit me out. Head. We didn't hang out with him <laughs> too much. Mm, his mask, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying he was a bad character. He actually, I'm I'm kind of actually annoyed because they made a joke about him being in charge of the gaming section. And yep. I'm like, show me what's going on over there. I'm intrigued. But God, his character design freaked me out. <laughs> And, you know, just thinking for me on the fact that this was the direction that Honda, that the author decided to take to retain um, anonymity, um, of, and then also, I guess, potentially maybe matching, like, how they looked to their personalities. I just think it was a very quirky choice, and I really, like, I had to get used to it, but then by the end of it, I actually kind of really liked it. I liked that approach. Mm. I want, yeah. Part of me is really curious about his if his colleagues figured out it was him and uh mm -hmm. managed to piece together who's who and their reaction to like you put me in this mask that's odd or whatever <laughs> yeah who knows full face full faces live action counterparts like oh you gave me a motorcycle helmet right on i like that maybe Pete? you like spikes also... <laughs> please <laughs> It also, I think, did a good contrast from separating the bookstore workers from the customers because um, at least like when I'm in the library, I feel that sort of uh, that separation, that difference between the patrons that come up to the counter and then like myself and my team that's kind of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Yeah. Um, also, just the, the contrast of like how weirdly detailed and stuff um the character designs were and then all of the soft pastel colors like the very <laughs> pastel color palette uh again i think it's i think it's weird but it just worked for me i don't know why um the animation itself doesn't really do a lot like yeah you know, they don't they don't move a whole lot outside of maybe like gestures and i think that kind of just probably goes to mirror the simplicity of the manga where it's just like hey it's quirky it's light and color tones and then kind of just not very uh express well it's expressive only when it shows re like extreme reactions but other than that it's very chill everyone's just walking around and it kind of looks a little stiff but you know what you understand why it's almost like a picture book style. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, it reminds like it that. reminds me of these um like adult swim original like shows that they tend to have like Oh, yeah, I could totally oh, yeah. see that. Almost yeah. like Aqua yeah, Teen like Hunger Aquatine Force Hunger Force and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> a robot chicken or something. Yeah. But yeah, I can um, agree. It's it sounds mm -hmm. like like an adult swim original mixed with like a children's picture book and became a thing. That's what the art style of Honda San <laughs> is. Um which to be fair, like once I got used to it, I kind of felt it pleasant because it's different. Like mm -hmm. we a lot of the anime that we consume, whether we like it or not, is very similar. And the animes yeah. that tend to stick out to me the most are ones that look different that you know don't base their entire um artistic direction on the moe style for example like things like rakugo shinju that are a little bit more based in reality or um i really like how um outworldly like fire force from this season looks um i think that honda falls into that same category of wow this is different so i tip my hat to you sir for trying something fucking different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i agree i do feel for me it was very refreshing like i mean so many things about the show were just different, so I found it refreshing, but definitely yeah. in the art. 
Yeah. Um, and to be fair, while, like, the animation itself didn't move a lot, I was very impressed with how many expressions they gave a skeleton. And not only a skeleton, the other, the co-workers, too. Like, you have uh, Section Chief Armor crying out of her, like, little helmet sockets. Yeah, um, and, like, yeah. they made a skeleton look moe at times, and I didn't know how that was humanly... <laughs> like, or when he got really flustered and it was, like, a chibi form, I was like, how did you... How did you do that? I love little chibi Honda. Chibi and then, like you said, they made him Honda. sweat. <laughs> yeah, they did. Making him, making him sweat was quite interesting. He but, is the most uh, adorable it, skeleton. Oh, he's a good. He's a good one. Um, there was that episode where he, uh, he went out on his own, and he was in a blue. Uh, hoodie, like, right? Yeah, the hoodie. And I went on Tumblr, and someone screen capped that, and then they were like, "Don't say anything," because they were all like, "Hurt the dirt sands." <laughs> and I oh was like, God! Okay. All right, all right. Do y'all sure. do y'all want to know some fun production facts about the show? Credit Credit Corner. Credit yeah. Corner. Okay. Uh, the director of this production. I kid you. I kid you not. This guy's name is Owl Todoroki. Uh, <laughs> if you look him up on my anime list, he also looks like he's wearing a mask, which is paper bag. I don't know if he thought that paper bag uh, San was his favorite character or whatnot, but this is his first show. Uh, same with the writer, series composition by Shin Okashima, and the. Music, which includes the openings and the endings, uh, is composed by Techno Boys uh, Polecraft Green Fund. Uh, yeah, they have a name. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, they did the opening, they did the ending, they did the score of the show. Uh, they've done a bunch of shows, uh, most notably that anyone here would probably recognize as Kake Gurui Season 1 and Season 2. Wait, really? Yeah. Huh. That's intense. Interesting. Yeah. Um, fun fact about the the band that did the opening and ending. Um, I watched the music video for the ending song, and they're literally just a group of like very charming, sweet old men that wear suits <laughs> and just look <laughs> very happy. And I was like, This is so cute, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> they're happy to uh be performing. Really and nice. it's just funny because, you know, there's not a music video of them screaming ISBN in the <laughs> for the opening. Ah. So it's I do like how contrasting um, the opening and ending are. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, I, I like it. I admittedly, I like the opening because it like it kind of screams of what Asabi Asabase did, where the opening was in that show was calm and then the ending was screamo. It's kind of the reverse in this case. My only thing with the ending for Honda-san was. Man, I kind of wish I saw more of him hanging out with this editor and reading manga mm-hmm. and actually wanting to write his manga, but we only got like one skit of that. The question yeah. is, has Honda himself ever read a special yaoi book? Probably. <laughs> I hope so. Um, <laughs> I, would, but, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah. I personally liked both the opening and ending. I can see how people wouldn't care for either, um, mm-hmm. or would skip them, or would skip them if you're out of time. I also totally get that. A fun fact I do also want to share, though. I mean, the opening itself shouts ISBN and like, and then goes into metal screaming. And I made a tweet about this, but when I went into my first few um, weeks of classes, mm-hmm. uh, whenever my professor would mention ISBN, my brain literally just went IS and 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 that's cute. Um, I also I also love all the title cards in the opening that flip through all these different styles, like book covers. Oh like yeah, the range yeah. of them. That part's so fucking cool. And I like that the ending is just Chibi Honda going through his day, and he falls asleep with a book on his face. <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, it's cute stuff. I really liked the opening. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. And I really liked the ending a lot. I just wanted to watch the ending forever, to be completely honest. It just made me so happy. Aww, it was just so good. soft. 
soundtrack wise, I mean, I think that it was serviceable. I kind of liked a little whistly song that played most of the time. Yeah, it's very chill. And again, I think Cassie said it perfectly initially when we were talking about story, but voice acting, I think, carries the show yep. for sure. very well. Mm. Yeah. And I think that honestly, everybody involved did a really good job. Even the people that had to speak the, in- the English, like from the customer side, great job. For sure. I actually kind of was like, yo, I'm surprised this doesn't have a dub. I'd watch it dubbed. Ooh. But then, like, how would they... I guess my curiosity is how would they do the language ones? You know, that's true. Very true. That's I think that's like my only hold up on there. But I would also love a dub. Um, And I actually can't remember. uh... Oh, what the fuck? Okay, sorry. I went to my anime list and I was looking at uh, the person who voiced Honda. Oh, yeah. And he's actually like super prolific. Um, Yep. And he plays he plays another anxious boy, Yamaguchi Tadashi, in High Q. And now suddenly it all makes sense that he's so good at being anxious boys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice stuff. Nice stuff. I think if y'all are good, we can roll on into ratings. Yeah. Yeah. Let's sure. do it. Okay. I'm going to say Dom goes first. Me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um... I would give this show a check it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's it's a unique show with an, a pretty promising and interesting premise that I think a lot of people, especially those who work in retail or any sort of customer service kind of environment, will be able to relate to. Um... I also think that the art style and general presentation are, you know, like different enough from what we generally get to make it worth, you know, checking out. But also the the format and the general um, way that people tend to, you know, react to or take in comedy, you know, means that, you know, it's not going to always resonate with everyone. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And give it a check it. Cool beans. Right on. Alrighty. Uh John, your turn. Um I really I liked it. I'm gonna say that alright. Um I'll, uh it didn't like maybe uh maybe it's my fault for trying to binge it when it's really not good for binging. Uh just Take your time with this. Um, but yeah, I, I wish it had resonated with me a bit more, but again, it might have been because I did watch it so quickly. Um, but I did still really enjoy it enough to give it a like it. Um, I had, uh, there was, even though I've no experience working as a bookseller, uh, I could still relate to the, the whole retail aspect of it. And getting all the reference, uh, all the references that I did, um, they got chuckles out of me, and so okay. it was enjoyable. Good to hear. All right, Gregory, you are up. Uh, basically, um, I've been kind of going back and forth between the check it and the like it. I know for some people that this show didn't really resonate with them, and I can uh, kind of understand why. Um outside of the interactions with the customers we don't really get a lot of exposure with the core cast the ensemble um outside of honda and that i kind of wish we got more exposure so ultimately i would say i liked the show uh personally um and i enjoyed my time with it there it should be noted that there are two skits per episode so some skits in my opinion were stronger than others um most notably that I could recall off the top of my head was the one where he goes to a training with another individual and he has to, and he's having an anxiety attack the entire time. And of course, while they did have quite a bit of them, I still enjoyed his interactions with foreign customers. So again, I enjoyed my time. I liked it. Alrighty. Yeah. Sounds good. Cassie. 
I've been I've been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Um so it's 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 complicated. Which is weird because this is not a very complicated show. It's just very fun and wholesome and um it's it's just a fun romp. Um I think that if you had asked me based on the first half of the show, I would have given it a check it just because I wasn't feeling it at that point. Um, but I think for my final verdict, I'll give it a like it because I think that after I got used to the kind of humor and I got used to the character designs and I got used to the kind of humor that they were trying to display to me. Because that's another thing is that workplace humor is definitely not going to hit um, with everyone. Um, yeah. Uh, if anything, I think, Cammy, you told me that like for one of your friends, significant others, it caused them kind of anxiety and they couldn't even watch the show. Yeah, um, they said it felt stressful. Yeah, for sure. And and for me, it was never stressful. But I think that there were a couple times where it hit home and I was like, this isn't funny. It just hurts. Um, <laughs> but that's that's also goes to valuing in what they present to you. Like, I value that they they decided to take a turn on workplace humor and make it an interesting but overall positive experience. I think that overall Honda is a positive experience, regardless of the amount of negativity he gets from some of his customers. So I think that just based on that, I think I enjoyed my time, especially when I got used to everything it was throwing at me. So I'm going to give it a like it. And okay. I'm going to say just if you haven't watched it as a viewer to take your time. Um, if you watch the first episode and you're like, wow, this just isn't my speed, that's okay. But I'd still say give it a couple more episodes and see if you can get used to it. It's so out of the box and so out of the norm that I think it deserves the attempt to get accustomed to it. Mm. But I think mm -hmm. that once you do get accustomed, it's a pretty fun ride. I don't know if it's something I'll go back and necessarily watch right away. But if it got like an English dub, I'd love to see what they did with it. Yeah. So nice. I'm going to give it a like it. And I think that it would be a fun little romp for anybody who's looking for a little slice of pie at the end of their day. Don't don't marathon the show. Just just eat it like a little treat. Hmm. And Cassie's tradition of marvelous uh, metaphors continues. I try. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, then, yeah, I will go last. So Honda-san is, um, was definitely just, like, very refreshing for me for all of the reasons that people have um, mentioned. And I think just somehow in this show... Uh, the stars aligned, and in so many different ways, it appealed to me personally. Um, while I've never worked at a bookstore, I do work in libraries, and I also spent a lot of time in bookstores as a kid. Um, so I just really enjoyed that environment. I loved, um, unexpectedly, I loved the main character a whole lot, primarily, that I think for some reason, I get a sick, twisted uh, catharsis out of workplace humor <laughs> and yeah. anxiety place humor. I think it just works for me. Um, for sure. Again, like I love Shiro Bako and like other shows. Um, I think I just really like that hashtag same. I like being able to point at the screen and say me. And this mm -hmm. show provided me a lot of opportunities for that. Um, so somehow it really resonated with me. But I do think, again, as Dominic said, comedy, again, your mileage may vary. And just for whatever reasons, this one did really, really work for me. So, like, it's a situation where I totally can see the flaws in it or I can see how it's forgettable. But, like, it just hit on all cylinders for me and I love it. So I've just got to go with that. Yeah, like, <laughs> I know I the issues that. with it, but I love it. So, mm. Yeah. Girl, um, I remember even, flashing back to Tomiko Market where everybody was giving a like it, and I was like, Tom, yeah, oh, exactly. this is such a gem. I love it. This is your Honda song. It's and exactly great. that. Yeah. Like, or if you, yeah, if you go back to our Tomako Market episode, you can hear Cassie encapsulate the, you know, sometimes shows you just personally love. It's, she says it very well in that episode. Um, hey girl. But yeah, so okay. that's the. That's the same for me here. I've gone back and, uh, like, usually when I'm doing my hair, I'll watch anime. And I've gone back and just binged, like, six episodes of this at one time just because I, like, wanted Aww. to get that same feeling that I got from it. Yeah. It's really special to me, so I couldn't give it anything less. Um, if you are interested in another show that involves some workplace humor specifically taking place at a bookstore, I would recommend the show Denki Guy no Honya-san, which is honestly kind of like a bit of ridiculous humor as well but i will say that the characters all look like human beings they look like very moe human beings 
Um, it's a mixed cast of guys and girls working at a bookstore, like, right in the middle of, um, I think it's, like, yeah, right in the middle of the city. There is some of the otaku humor. There is a bit of, like, lewd humor that could be a turnoff, but, I mean, you can definitely give it a chance. Um, I think it's a really, really good pick if you're looking for something similar to Honda-san. You just may not like as much of the fan service, because thankfully Honda-san didn't do too much of that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really weird if it did. I would love to see how Honda-san, att- like, uh, even attempted fan I don't service. Know if I want to see it. <laughs> I don't I am know. Don't I'm, more I'm, I'm concerned that that is something you want to see. Like, <laughs> that, that that's something you're I actively just, like, oh yeah, it would be great I'm, if they did that. I, that, that concerns <laughs> me. As your significant other, I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna throw that and one I mean, out there. Here's what I'm saying: they've looted the skeletons in Undertale. They could no! easily. No! Oh, no! I don't need to oh, be reminded Wait, of that. Sans X Honda song. No, I, this is a, no. This is I'm a still curse. down for the this one. This po- I... podcast is cursed now. <laughs> this podcast is cursed. Turn it off. <laughs> Shut it down. Shut it down. No. <laughs> Hold on. I'm still I'm still down for the ship that I came up with during our Luluco review, which I had, which was um fucking ugh, what's the flaming skeleton tough Over guy that justice. triggered us? No, not o- the other one. Inferno Robocop. Cop. I want in- Inferno Cop, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want Inferno Cop and Honda San to be best buds. I just want them to go out for tea together. That'd be nice. Aw. Or ramen, whatever. Or a beer. Just, just... Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want them to get beer. Blame That's it good on shit. the a- 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 alcohol. Yes. And if you want to blame us on our alcohol consumption, <laughs> you can do so at a few places, including twitter.com slash Annie Chatbox. You can email us, said complaints, at Annie Chatmail at gmail.com. You can listen to us at iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And if you are feeling charitable and maybe want us to get hella drunk and uh, review Woo! stuff, then you can. <laughs> that might be a that might be a tier on our Patreon at patreoncom slash Annie Chatbox. I'll put and... it on there. Why the fuck not? Drunk review. How much we want to charge? We'll. Find, you know what? No, we'll find we out. I'll we add it. I'll add it. Hell yeah. And that being said, that's a free tip off to our current patrons, Sarah, Corpsey, and Carol, Suki, Paul, and Treble Clef. So, you know, if you really want to see us make fools of ourselves, you have new options, new pathways. I didn't get and to thanks. do it last episode because I wasn't here, but thank you so much to our new patron. That made me so happy. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do love you. We love all of you. We appreciate your donations. And... Um, if you want to donate some time and you're listening to another podcast, there is one that you can do so <gasps> called Save Our Progress featuring uh, our very own Gregory. What's up? Along with friends Zach, Paul, and Pete and various guests as they go and discuss, honestly, anything. You know, I usually say like video games, um, TV shows, media, anime, yeah. all of that. But you know what? Now I can even say absence because y'all literally had an episode <laughs> where you were all gone. <laughs> yep. It finally <laughs> happened. We took a week off for God, like for crying out loud. Uh, Zach was committed to never missing an episode until everyone literally crashed and burned. Uh, if you go back in the feed, a little bit. We did celebrate our three-year anniversary. Oh, I need to listen to that one. I think yeah, I'm behind. So do I. <laughs> I need to listen more. You know where you can listen, John? That's <gasps> SoundCloud.com slash Save Our Progress. Yeah, Cammy is on a roll. Kim is just <laughs> she's so just on point. Like, she's always it. on point. Yep. But even <laughs> but today, she is just like even more so. Like, hey. You know those words he put together? I'm going to put them in a different direction. Watch me go. (laughs) Ah, I learned from the best. I love (laughs) y'all.
<laughs> there you go. That sounds like an opportunity for a segue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We like to take advantages of segues, including this one right now where we're going to segue on out of this episode. But again, thank you for tuning in to episode 117 and stay tuned because we've got some really fun, hmm, seasonal one might say, um, content coming along the way. Woot. All right. That being said, I got to go pack. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Jesus Christ!